the raging coronavirus pandemic. This morning, alarming COVID numbers all across the country. One million Americans diagnosed with COVID-19 just this week. That's about 100 Americans diagnosed every minute. In Philadelphia, where cases are rising, the city starting sweeping restrictions Friday, closing indoor dining, gyms, and putting an end to youth sports through the end of the year. California also seeing a surge starting Tuesday. 94% of the state will fall under its strictest tier of restrictions. In Michigan, Rapid spread, almost 13,000 new COVID-19 cases in one day. In Utah, ICUs are nearing capacity. Frontline workers from New York, once the epicenter of the virus, are now heading there to help. In Iowa, the strain on state hospitals led Governor Kim Reynolds to announce a new mask mandate in nearly all indoor spaces and a ban on indoor gatherings of more than 15 people after months of resisting calls to do so. If Iowans don't buy into this, we lose. You know, guys, it's amazing to me that we are eight months into this pandemic and we're somehow getting worse at dealing with it. It makes no sense. Imagine if I started learning French today and on day one, I was like, je ne peux pas français, parlez-vous français? And then eight months later after practicing, I was like, uh, me no French, don't speak French. And I think it's a little insane that these restrictions are just now happening. Because we've known about the importance of wearing a mask for months. And some states are only now putting a mask mandate into place. Only now? It's like hosting a pool party. And then in the last 10 minutes saying, all right, guys, new rule, no shitting in the pool. Yeah, I'm looking at you, David. I mean, better late than never, but there's some shit floating around. But this is why it's so important to always wear a mask in public spaces. Like you can protect your loved ones and your whole community with a $3 strip of fabric, people. You have no excuse. And yes, maybe you're saying, but Trevor, I'm a rich snob. I would never wear something that only cost $3. Well, now you have no excuse either. Who says that staying safe can also be a fashion statement? The world's <laughs> most expensive face mask now making its debut. The $1.5 million mask was created by an Israeli jewelry company. Hey, the holidays are coming. It features more than 3,600 black and white diamonds set in 250 grams of pure 18 karat gold. The designer says <laughs> it's made to be 100% wearable. It features a slot for the wearer to insert, yes, a disposable N99 mask, which is actually finer than an N95 mask. Yeah. Wow. A $1.5 million mask. Rich people, learn how to read the room. People all over the world are like, we're starving and we need a more equal society. And then rich people are like, is there any way I can breathe through diamonds? I'm just saying, maybe lay low for a little while. Honestly, guys, where are you even gonna wear this thing, huh? Where are you gonna wear a diamond mask? I mean, you're not gonna wear it in the streets. What are you gonna wear to a, a fancy party? You're not even supposed to be having parties during Corona. So you're just gonna end up wearing this around the house, showing it off to your cat. So, Mr. Whiskers, you impressed? <coughs> no, you go back to where you came from. Of course, masks aren't the only important thing needed to slow the spread of coronavirus. We also have to keep up social distancing. And right now, that means not having big family get-togethers for the holidays, especially indoors, which sucks. Please don't get me wrong, I get it. But does it suck more than having your loved ones die of COVID? Well, according to the Trump administration, yes, yes it does. Dr. Scott Atlas, who is one of the president's sources as, as it relates to the pandemic, and he has now come out and is talking about what, what people should be doing as they head into Thanksgiving with so much attention on the holiday right now. And this kind of isolation is one of the unspoken tragedies of the elderly who are now being told, don't see your family at Thanksgiving. For many people, this is their final Thanksgiving, believe it or not. What are we doing here? I think we have to have a policy, which I have been advocating, which is a whole person, whole health policy. No, man, this dude can't be serious. For many people, this is their final Thanksgiving, really? I mean, yes, thanks to the Trump administration is definitely gonna be many people's final Thanksgiving, but still. And I love that, that whole whole person health policy. If you get corona, that's the whole thing. It's not like you're gonna say, well, I died of COVID, but damn, those mashed potatoes were great. Look, I do think it's important for people to see their families, especially around Thanksgiving. People look forward to it. But 
I also think it's more important to be able to see your family for the next 10 Thanksgivings, that they'll hopefully get to be with you in person after all of this is done. It's not like Americans aren't used to the idea of not going home for the holidays because they have to keep the country safe. American generals in World War II, they understood this. They weren't like, yes, beating Hitler is important, but what's the point of freedom if we have to miss cranberry sauce for one year? Let's go home, soldiers. And it's so hilarious that conservatives have ended up here. Because when this pandemic started, you remember? They said, we don't need to shut down the economy, just be safe and responsible. Then they were like, we don't have to wear masks just to protect the elderly. Now they're like, you know what? Bring the elderly in here. I can't fit all those leftovers in my fridge. Okay, get in here. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense why Trump is willing to risk old people being exposed to corona this much, unless, unless he thinks that it'll end up making him look good in the long run because you won't have old people dying if all the old people are already dead. The coronavirus. It's the reason we're all throwing dinner parties in a parking lot. Right now, things are looking pretty dire. There have been over 11 million recorded cases in the US and one third of all Americans know someone who has died of COVID-19. And with the holidays just around the corner, there is both good news and bad news. The bad news, of course, is that you won't be able to spend time with your extended family. The good news is you won't have to spend time with your extended family. And this morning, there was also some really good news. This morning, another potential breakthrough in the battle against COVID, a vaccine developed by Moderna showing a 94.5% efficacy rate in a trial with 30,000 participants. One big difference between the Moderna vaccine and one developed by Pfizer that also reported very promising results in early trials, Moderna says its vaccine doesn't need to be kept at extremely low temperatures to remain stable. That could help with shipping and distribution. Yes, people, just weeks after a vaccine was announced, there's another one on the way. I mean, are you serious? No vaccine, two vaccines. I mean, at this point in three months, we're gonna have so many vaccines, you'll be able to pick the one that just best fits your personality. Are you getting the Moderna vaccine? No, dude, I'm getting the Pfizer one. I mean, I'm a Gemini. Now, apparently the Pfizer vaccine is 90% effective, but the Moderna vaccine is 94.5% effective. You know what that means, right? I'm taking both because then I'll be 184% immune from COVID, baby. Woo! When COVID is in the room, it's gonna catch me. Where you at, COVID? Where you at? This is also gonna raise the stakes for vaccines because some scientists will come out like, I made another vaccine. It is 88% effective. And we'll be like, what? Kill yourself, you 88% dumbass. And here's something interesting. Moderna says that its research is going much faster than expected Because in order to get enough data, they need a certain number of people in the study to catch coronavirus. And that has been extremely easy because this pandemic is so out of control. Just imagine that for a second. We're getting the vaccine faster because of irresponsible people. So you need to go out on your balcony at 7 p.m. tomorrow night and you clap for those people who are not wearing masks. (laughs) But guys, let me tell you something. When this vaccine hits, the streets are gonna be lit. It's gonna be like the end of World War II. Hell, I'm gonna be in Times Square kissing the first bat that I see. Come here. Mm -hmm. This is the time of year when Americans would normally be fighting over whether to get the canned cranberry sauce or the good canned cranberry sauce. But in Corona, the big question is whether to have Thanksgiving at all. There's no place like home for the holidays and that indulgent Thanksgiving feast with friends and family. But coast to coast, cases of the coronavirus are on the rise and travel plans are changing. In a recent survey, 47% of Americans say they're going to cancel. There is growing concern the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday could turn into a super spreader event. New York City's Mayor Bill de Blasio just announcing that the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will go virtual this year. Some experts are calling the hundreds of thousands of college students traveling across the country for the holidays, quote, little ticking time bombs. Oh, yeah. This is the perfect holiday week for Corona. Young people come home from colleges, party together indoors in their hometown, and then hang out with their oldest relatives. 
You best believe Corona's already lining up right now like it's a Black Friday sale on grandparents. And let's be honest, Corona would just be one more shitty thing that kids bring home from college. Because college kids only bring stuff home that nobody wants. Piles of dirty laundry, shitty taste in beer, their new boyfriend who starts every sentence with, well, according to Nietzsche... Shut up and pass the mashed potatoes, Beckett. Honestly, I think they should just cancel the parade altogether. Why would I want to watch a virtual balloon of SpongeBob when I could just watch the actual SpongeBob? In fact, why am I even talking to you now when I could be watching SpongeBob? <laughs> Squidward, you never win. <laughs> but even with the pandemic, many people don't want to cancel Thanksgiving altogether. And the good news, people, is that you don't need to cancel Thanksgiving as long as you take some simple precautions. If you have no choice but to have dinner indoors, be sure to open the windows. Really let that outdoor air circulate in. It'll get nice and cold, but you're also gonna get a lot of air exchange and it'll really create that outdoor environment indoors. Eat at separate tables if dining inside. Of course, the safest Thanksgiving is going to be spent virtually apart, but together, and Zoom is trying to help out with that. They're gonna be lifting their 40 minute time limit on free video chats, so your Thanksgiving video calls can go on for as long as like. Whoa, 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 whoa. Zoom is allowing unlimited calls? Do they not realize how much they are screwing us over? People, that 40 minute time limit was a get out of jail free card. Yeah, you can thank Zoom this year when you're on a three hour call with your cousin explaining his foot surgery. You see Trevor, it's called a metatarsal. And in the foot, there are many bones. The smaller they can break a fracture. And connected to that one, it's the meniscus through the Achilles tendon, which can be pulled slightly. And then that can create the problem. But the doctor said, the doctor said what? We can fix it. But a lot of these suggestions are smart, all right? Like opening the windows is a great idea. It improves ventilation and social distancing. Because you see, once the room is freezing and the food is all cold, everyone will get back in their cars and go home. In fact, I also have an idea for a safe Thanksgiving. Instead of playing your annual touch football game, keep social distance by playing paintball. Also, don't tell anyone else that you're playing paintball. Yeah, if you're the only one with a paintball gun, you automatically win. Of course, a smaller guest list just means a smaller turkey. And weird as it seems, even that is creating a problem this year. Health officials are really urging people to pass on that big, traditional, large family gathering. And that has actually led to a weird dilemma. There's a run on small turkeys. Turkeys that are 10 to 14 pounds are in high demand right now, with consumers reporting picked over freezer cases with only 20 pound birds left behind. That has created a shortage of smaller birds. Since the growth time of a turkey starts in the summer, it's hard to control their size. They're gonna grow at the pace they're going to grow at. And you can't say, okay guys, um, we're gonna put you on a diet. That just doesn't work. All right, everybody, we did it. We discovered the most American problem of all time. You're worried that even your food is too overweight? And yeah, that farmer is right. You cannot put a turkey on a diet. But what you can do is tell them that their high school reunion is coming up. Best believe they'll be eating salad with dressing on the side for a month. Also, how would a turkey diet even work? Okay, guys, listen up. This is called a juice cleanse, right? For a week, you're all gonna be drinking lemon juice with like cayenne, pepper, and you know what? It just seems more normal on Instagram. Now that I'm saying it to you in real life, it feels strange. <laughs> but listen here, America, everybody has to eat the big turkeys, please. Because if we don't eat the big turkeys this year, that means they're only gonna get bigger next year. Then, by the next year, we'll be wrestling the turkey over who goes in the oven. <laughs> and finally, there's one more way that Corona is making Thanksgiving more difficult than usual. If the whole family isn't gathering at grandma's house this year, that means they can't just make grandma do all the cooking. With more people staying home for Thanksgiving, more Americans will be cooking at home for the first time, and some of them are stressed. A new survey by Campbell's shows that one in five home cooks are gonna be first-time Thanksgiving hosts, and two-thirds of Americans are dreading the possibility of an epic cooking fail. And with more amateur cooks hitting the kitchen this year, one firefighter says it could be a recipe for disaster. It's easy to see how they get distracted. They walk away from a stove top, they walk away from an oven, 
and the next thing you know is we have a disaster. If culinary arts isn't your calling, then cooking a Thanksgiving turkey can be tricky. That's why Whole Foods has teamed up with Progressive Insurance to provide their first ever Thanksgiving turkey protection plan. If you have a turkey cooking fail, Whole Foods is offering a $35 gift card as insurance. All customers will need a receipt, a picture of the failed turkey, and an explanation of what went wrong. So Whole Foods actually wants a picture of a failed turkey? My only question is, will they accept one of the presidents of the United States? <laughs> but for real though, man, you could not have a better embodiment of the problems facing America than right here, right? On a day when people gather during a deadly pandemic to binge eat, it's the turkey that has a solid insurance plan. This is why I play it safe and microwave my turkey. Yeah, it's quick, it's easy, and you can use all that extra time that you save to deal with the salmonella that you contract. But it looks like corona or not, America is gonna find some way to celebrate Thanksgiving this year. But please, no matter how you do it, just try and be as safe as you can because this pandemic is no joke. And the most important thing about Thanksgiving is making sure that you're around for the next one.